Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my very first cosplay tutorial. I'm Joey, aka Lock Props. Today we're going to be taking a look at Tanjiro's Blade from Demon Slayer. Now I have been loving this series and I am so excited to get started with this blade here. Uh, this is going to be part one of four. So part one is going to be about the blade. Second part is going to be about the suba. Third is going to be about the handle. And the fourth is going to be about painting and putting it all together. Be sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so then that way you can know when those go live. If you wanted to actually follow along please be sure to check down in the description below because I created a free blueprint for you that way you can print it out piece it together and follow along if you need any of the tools down there also there's going to be affiliate links so then that way you can get the tools that you need and it also supports the channel with that being said let's get started we first start off by printing out the template. I have it printed in the standard 8.5 by 11 paper. If you have cardstock, that helps out a lot. Using my box cutter, I trace my pattern out on a cutting mat. If you don't have a cutting mat, I would recommend scissors for this part. I use tape to piece all the sections of the blade together. Since in this video we'll be starting with the blade, We'll cut out the blade template at the base where the suba and the blade meet. Using EVA foam, I grabbed my roll of 8mm TNT cosplay foam. Next, it's time to trace the pattern. Using a sharpie or a pen, carefully go around the outside of the template. I would recommend putting a paperweight on the template or use pins to keep it in place. Be sure to use a new blade or sharpened blade to make the cuts as clean as possible. I went around the template cut out the outside of the line so I can have extra material to sand down in case I glue it together and it's a little off. You will need two sides so we can sandwich them together with the support in the middle. Once I have the pieces cut out, they may not be straight, so I use my heat gun to straighten the pieces so I can keep them flat on the table. Heating up the foam will also shrink the pores on the surface of the foam, making it ready for sealing and painting. For the support, I took a 1 4th inch carbon fiber rod to put in the middle of the blade. We will have to cut and super glue the pieces together when we make the trench for the rod to go into. I take a piece of the rod that will be about halfway inside the blade and the other half will be the support for the handle. I trace around the rod so I can begin making the trench of the rod it will sit in. If I don't make this trench, you'll see the rod bulging out from the side. I will use the box cutter at a 45 degree angle, making sure not to cut all the way to the other side of the foam, just scoring it enough so that when I do the 45 degree score on both sides, I will be able to take a piece of the foam out and have the rod sit in the trench left behind. Now the convention I normally go to is Anime Expo, and now they have a rule where I can't have metal in the props, not even for the support, so makes things a lot harder now. But, no worries, we will use the rod to keep the support of the blade and it won't break in the middle. Next I take the contact cement and put two coats on the rod and in the trench on both sides. Be sure to be in a well ventilated area or use a respirator when using contact cement. You'll know when the contact cement is ready when it isn't glossy anymore and it's a little tacky when you touch it. I normally wait around 5-10 to 10 minutes after applying. Don't wait too long though. Next we'll be using super glue. I put a generous amount at the joint of the two rods to keep them together. I use an accelerator on the glue to speed up the curing time to almost instant. 
Now I need to find out where I am going to cut the trench on the other side. So I took some heavy body acrylic paint. I only had silver, but I recommend to use white or another bright color. I put a good amount on the rod that's already glued to the one side of the foam, and then I try to line up the other piece right on top. The paint from the rod will mark where it's going to sit on the other side. Now I can cut out the recess for the rod. Now I cover both sides of the blade in contact cement, making sure I do two layers and let them dry. Now for the tricky part. When I'm putting the pieces together, I make sure to line up the trenches and the rod, not the edges of the blade. Remember, we cut on the outside of the sharpie line so we can sand it down later and make the edges even. I start from one side and slowly bend the piece so I can see where the rod is going to sit. I make sure it goes into the trench and once it's all together, I firmly press them together, firmly grasp it. making sure the glue is set. Taking my box cutter, I cut off the excess pieces of the blade just so I don't have to sand down as much later. For the sanding of the edges, I recommend using a Dremel with a sanding drum bit, or if you have a belt sander, that would be even easier. I take the rest of the template and divide the blade collar from the blade. The blade collar is the little square at the base of the blade. Then cut the template in half where the line is. This will help us shape down the edge of the blade. I take my sharpie and trace the blade collar. And then take one of the blade template's halves and make the center line. I use painter's tape to line the blade where the edge is going to be sanded down. This helps me cover what doesn't need to be sanded, and it will also protect the foam a little if I go too far on the belt sander. But before I get to sanding, I have to cut off the blade collar. This will get in the way of the sanding and needs to remain a square, so we'll need to use the box cutter to cut around the piece and then take it off and save it for later. Now I head for the belt sander, trying to go slow and steady. If I rush this or put too much pressure, there is the possibility of taking out too much of the foam. Trust me when I tell you there will be a lot of dust, so wear a respirator or a mask. This next trick I learned from Evil Ted. We will first use 220 grit sandpaper to go up and down on each side, and then do the same with the 320 grit. This will really help smooth out the blade. After the sanding is done, I heat seal the foam one more time. Remember that blade collar we cut out earlier? Grab it because we'll need to use the box cutter to lightly score the surface of the foam and then use the heat gun to open up those lines we cut in. Next we will take out the super glue and piece the blade and the collar together. The last step is going to be sealing the foam. I put three coats of Plasti Dip on the sword, and now it's ready for paint. No, it's not going to actually protect me from any demons, but it will be con safe, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. I really appreciate you. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, so then that way you can know when the rest of the build comes out. That being said, have a great rest of the day, you guys. Bye.